Well, hey, everybody. My name is William Austin, and welcome to the Zach Phone Factory. Uh, we are going to, we're working out of the uh, Rubank Advanced Method, Volume 1, and we are on Unit 5. Unit 5. 5 out of 36. A long way to go. All right. Um, the next one is, let me make sure I have this correct. Correct. I believe that it is page 6. Number nine, page six. Get the uh, the syllabus up. You know the thing I I, I really like about the syllabus is this: uh, you always have something to do. You always have the thing that didn't go well the last time to go back to, and you all always have the next thing to do. And it's divided divide it up into scales and arpeggios. We talk about how important that is. Uh, melodic interpretation because you always want to be able to play pretty. Articulation, you always want to get the articulation correct. Um, finger exercises to build dexterity, uh, ornamentation, uh, and then solos. So, uh, uh, you know, a piece to work on, a short piece. Don't It says solos, but they're just etudes, really. Anyway, we're on um, Unit 5, page 6, number 9. The A minor scales, there are three minor scales. I'm going to take a little time with this. There are three minor scales, or three forms of minor scales. Uh, there is the natural minor, or what we used to call back in the day, pure minor, which is based on the sixth note of the major scale. And the A minor scales is based on the sixth note of your C scale. C, D, E, F, G, A. The, the natural minor uses the same key signature as the major. They are called relative minors, okay? So let's go ahead and play the first set in number nine, which is the natural minor. That means it's A to A in the key of C. No flats, no sharps. Pretty easy. Here we go. Number nine. Natural minor. Two. Ready? And do you see where it, 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 you know, it starts to sound a little different, a little more sad? It's because of the third, the, the relationship of the first note and the third note. Here's the first note. <laughs> The third note. Right? That makes sense to you? In the major, it's a happier sound. What we just played, we call the minor third. That means it's only, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, it's only a step and a half. Now we're going to do two steps up to the A to the C sharp. This one's the major. La, 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 la. You've heard that a million, million times. The minor sounds like this. The major. Did you hear the difference? So we are working right now in this particular exercise, and I think for the rest of this unit, in the minor, I think. We'll see as we go along. The second form of minor scale, remember I told you there are three forms of minor scale, is the harmonic minor scale. The harmonic minor scale has the same key signature as the major scale, but the seventh scale degree or the seventh note of the minor scale is raised one half step. Normally, in this A minor scale, we'd have a G natural, but the harmonic minor makes us play a G sharp. I'm going to play the natural minor scale going up, and then I'm going to play the harmonic minor scale also ascending, and see if you can hear the difference. I'm taking some time with this because I think it's really important that you get something out of it. Here we go. 
the natural minor scale ascending. <laughs> the harmonic minor scale ascending. Did you hear it? Natural minor scale ascending, going up. Harmonic minor scale ascending. Natural. Natural minor. All right, all right. You get it? Now, if you don't understand, just stop the video, rewind, get your book out, or go to the, the, uh, the PDF, and then you'll be able to see it for yourself. The and now, the third form of minor scale is called the melodic minor scale. Okay? The, the melodic minor scale shares a similar key signature with the um, its relative major, C major in this, in this particular case, but the ascending going up, the sixth and the seventh scale degree are raised a half step from the natural. The natural minor has an F, a natural minor has an F natural and a G natural. The melodic minor ascending has an F sharp and a G sharp. However, descending, it reverts back to the natural minor. It's the only scale that I am that I know of personally. Now there may be others. I may not know of everything. As a matter of fact, I probably don't. Um, that um, is different coming down than it is going up, or different going up than it is coming down. All right. I'm going to play the melodic minor scale ascending. Going up. Here we go. With the exception of the C natural, it almost sounds major going up, doesn't it? Did you hear that? I'll do it again. And it reverts to the natural minor or the pure minor going down. Sounds like this. One more time. Going down. Melodic, the A melodic minor going up and coming down. Now, as strange as that is, the melodic minor scale is used in a lot of things, both in jazz and concert music. It's it, if it is the choice of, of minor scales for a lot of composers. So it's important that you get actually all three, but, but the melodic minor scale in particular. All right, one more time. We're going to go through number number page six, number nine. We're going to play the natural minor ascending and descending, the harmonic minor ascending and descending and the melodic minor ascending and descending. Ready? Page six, number nine. <laughs> Harmonic. <laughs> Harmonic. <laughs> Alrighty, there you go. That was page six, number nine. All right, now we're moving on. Uh, we are still on on unit five. Uh, we're doing uh, unit five, um, and the next one is on page twenty-three, number five. Uh, there are 
it is this one here is an A minor, and for the most part, it's an A natural minor. There is a um, a portion that is a direct ripoff of the A melodic minor scale. Hopefully, you'll hear that. All right, like all of these, what I would do is I would I would practice them slowly, break them down in sections, four measure, A measure sections, and then put them together. All right, here we go. Uh, it's moderato, page 23, number 5. One, two, three. <laughs> That was page 23, number 5, as part of Unit 5 in the it, Rubank Advanced Method for Saxophone, Volume 1. All right, we're going to work on, on the next one, which is page 45, number 5. Obviously, um, just like the rest of them, like we, like we said, it's going to be in A minor, and it uses A harmonic minor almost right away. See if you can hear, listen for the raised 6th degree and the raised 7th degree. Here we go. And. Did you hear it? It's right here, the second measure and the third measure. They were both raised in the first measure. Remember we said that the sixth and the seventh are raised ascending, and then they're in reverse to the natural minor descending. That's what happens. Let's see if we can hear it one more time. The first measure, on the second measure, you have a G sharp and an F sharp, and on the third measure, you have a G natural and an F natural. All righty. On to the next one. All right, we are going to continue uh, Unit 5. Now we are on the fingering, fingering exercises. My head's chopped off and I hate that. Sorry, y'all. All right, it's a little better. Um, the uh, fingering exercises that are on page 54, numbers 10, 11, and 12. I'm going to go through them, play each of them twice. If I'm going too fast, then you can stop the video or slow it down and then practice it and then turn the video back on. Here we go. Page 54, number 10, 11, and 12. Ready? And. <laughs> Twelve. 
And there you go. All right, page 60, number four is the next one. Um, it is in the key of D. It has an F, uh, F sharp and a C sharp. We're going to play it just like we did number one with 16th notes. The rhythm should be 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1. Okay. Here we go. Uh, there's only one um, alternate fingering in this one. It's going from the C sharp to the D. The C sharp, we're going to play open. And we're going to play the D open with just this middle palm key. Let's see if we can get it even. All right, starting on uh, the, at the beginning, number four, page 60. Two, ready? <laughs> Orpheus of the Deep, the Minuet, uh, page 66, number one. Now, we only have, we have this time and one more time before we go to the next one, uh, which is Ch Chanson Triste by Tchaikovsky. But we are going to get everything we can out of this exercise. Like I said, I'm, I'm even wearing a different shirt. I'm not just recording it once and letting you find it. No, I'm, I'm going to play it through every time because I want you to be able to do the very same thing. All right, here we go. Here's a solo <clears throat> by Gluck. Two, ready? <laughs> idea while I was playing this. I want you to listen to all the times I've played it. There'll be six times total. And you write in the comments which time you think I played it the best. Something fun to do. Well, that's the end of Unit 5. Thanks again. Uh, we're on to Unit 6.